I still remember my first hand of No Limit Hold'em. I was back in college, and uh, you know, we were playing in a game where nobody had more than about twenty, thirty dollars in front of them. And my first hand, I picked up the ten eight of Spades, and I flopped a flush draw. And there was about five dollars in the pot at this point, and I wanted to draw to my flush. And some guy bets five dollars. Well, I was mad as hell. I was like. You know, this isn't real poker, guys. You, know, you, you're, you should only be allowed to bet a dollar or something. I want to draw to my flush. Well, as I learned later, No Limit Hold'em is exactly what real poker is all about. There is no charity in No Limit Hold'em. You can't draw for free. You can't draw cheaply. If you want to draw, people are going to make you pay. And so, No Limit Hold'em is very different from a lot of the home games you've played in if you've never played No Limit before. And let's take a look at some of those differences. So at a lot of home games, we put limits on how much you can bet. Maybe it's a dollar or two, something so that nobody has to go home after the first hand when they lose all their money. But no limit is played more and more around the world, and it's really overtaking limit poker in the casinos. In fact, at most casinos, you're going to see more no limit tables now than you see limit. Um, and so what is the difference between no limit and limit hold them. The first difference is that small pairs are worth a lot more because you can win a nice size pot if you flop a set in limit poker but in no limit poker you can win someone's whole stack when you make a nice well disguised set. So in addition suited connectors also go way up in value although as I said before sometimes you can be priced out where you can't draw um, but if you do make a sneaky flush or straight and no one expects it, you can win a big, big pot. So if those hands go up in value, some hands must go down in value. And those are hands like ace-jack, ace-10, ace-9. Hands like that are not as powerful anymore because usually when you make the flop, you're only going to make one pair. And one pair is a very hard hand to play in no limit, especially when someone can make big bets and bully you out of the pot. The final important difference in No Limit Hold'em is you always have to be thinking about future betting rounds. This is so much more true in No Limit. Um, if you're going to call that bet on the flop, well, it may be kind of pointless if your opponent is just going to bet twice as much on the turn if you don't have a strong enough hand to call that turn bet. So you always have to be thinking about not only the bet that you're going to have to call on that street, but on the next street and the next street and decide whether you've got the goods so you can call all the way down. For that reason, you should rarely be calling many bets in No Limit Hold'em. You either have a good enough hand for a raise or you probably should be folding. So let's go over to the game board and look at an example that demonstrates some of these concepts. And here we've got Ace, Deuce of Spades, certainly a calling hand. We could make the nut flush and win a big pot with it. So we go ahead and call. We flop a flush draw, a nice flush draw, and we even have an over card with our ace. But Wild Winnie has bet $40 into us. So what do we do here? Well, we've got a lot of problems. The first problem is the guy on the button next to us could be thinking of raising, or one of the other two guys could be thinking of check raising. And that would be a disaster here for us with a, call, with a drawing hand. The second problem is the size of the bet. Clearly, we're not getting the pot odds to call here. Um, we could talk about implied odds and say, well, maybe if we make our flush, we're going to win a lot of money off of Winnie on the next couple of streets. But even with that, it's very unlikely that we're getting the odds to call $40 here. So the biggest problem is, of course, if we do call and we don't make our flush on the turn, she's probably going to bet again, and then we're just going to be in the same situation all over again. So we should definitely fold here. Let's go ahead and call just to see what happens. And see, there you go. We didn't make our flush, and now she's betting $105. So we just wasted $40 on the flop, and we're going to have to fold anyway here. Let's take a look at some of the most common mistakes that beginners make. And the biggest mistake of all of them is in their bet sizes. You should always be betting at least half the size of the pot in No Limit Hold'em. And you'll see people 
mess this up over and over again. They make the minimum bet or just something barely bigger than the minimum, and that will never accomplish the goals you had in mind when you made that bet. You're not going to get anybody to fold, and if someone does call, you're probably not getting as much money out of them as you could have. So be sure to always bet at least half the size of the pot, and there's usually not much of a reason to bet more than the size of the pot. So somewhere between half the pot and the full size of the pot is usually a good bet size. The second mistake, which we saw an example of in that hand we just looked at, is drawing too much. Unfortunately, in No Limit Hold'em, you just can't draw like you want to. It, everybody likes Limit Hold'em because you can sit there drawing all day because people can only bet $10 into a $50 pot, let's say, and that makes it real easy to draw to your straight or flush. But in No Limit Hold'em, you're not going to be able to draw, and don't convince yourself that you're getting the implied odds, which means the money you expect to make from the players on the turn in the river when you decide whether to call a flop bet. Because a lot of the time, they're going to catch on that you're on a draw, and when that flush card hits, they're not going to pay you off. The final beginner mistake is not being prepared to play for all your chips. In No Limit Hold'em, you have to be aware that on any hand, all the chips could go into the middle of the pot. And if you are scared money, that means bye-bye money. You're going to lose all your money if you play scared. So you have to show up at that table with an amount of money that you are prepared to lose and not be afraid of any bet that anyone puts out there if you've got the goods. Okay, well that's all for this video. Be sure to visit testyourpoker.com to get your free Poker IQ score and to check out our other videos.